Hello and welcome to Classmate Spell B Season 12, the biggest English spelling competition in India. Presented by Classmate, co-powered by Nickelodeon Sonic and the Times of India. This is an initiative by Radio Mirchi. I'm your host, Sohali Khan, and today I'm pretty sure I'm going to be on the edge of my seat because the competition until now has been severe, nail-biting and basically a whole lot of fun to witness. In the previous episode, we lost Joanna in round one and today, Arithri, Ahilan and Pari will go further into rounds two and three and compete for that chance to win the Spell Nobel. But before we begin with our quest, I will tell you about some of the most fascinating last words ever uttered by famous personalities. American comedian and film star Groucho Marx contracted pneumonia in the year 1977. However, that did not affect his sense of humor. Many believe that before dying, he said, Die, my dear? Why? That's the last thing I'll do. The last Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, more famous for her alleged words, let them eat cake, was sentenced to the guillotine for treason. She accidentally stepped on the foot of her executioner and her last words turned out to be, Pardonnez-moi, monsieur, je ne l'ai pas fait exprès, which literally translates to, Pardon me, sir, I did not do it on purpose. These words are considered representative of the famous idiom, How the mighty have fallen. Since Marie Antoinette was believed to be extravagant and indifferent towards the pitiful condition of her subjects. Winston Churchill, probably the most loved politician of the United Kingdom, is most famous for leading Great Britain successfully during the Second World War. With such an illustrious life to his name, it's surprising that his last words were, I'm bored with it all. Indian cinema's yesteryear superstar Rajesh Khanna's last words relay his love for cinema. As told by his close associate to the legendary Amitabh Bachchan, his last words were, Time ho gaya hai. Pack up, which literally translates to, it's time, pack up. Pack up is a phrase used at the end of a working day on a film shoot set and through these words, Rajesh Khanna, true to his persona, compared his own life to a film. And now, I'll wrap up the subject with Rajesh Khanna's other famous words. Babu Moshai, zindagi badi honi chahiye, lambi nahi. And on this happy note, let's start our hunt for India's next stellar speller. And now, I'm very, very pleased to introduce you to our three semi-finalists for the day. Let's meet Arithri Sen Gupta from Sri Shikshayatan in Kolkata. <laughs> Ahilan Saxena from Delhi Public School, Rohini in Delhi. And we have with us Pari Sharma from Cambridge Court in Jaipur. So I'd like to remind you all what you're playing for today. It's not only that shiny gold trophy over there, courtesy classmate. It's not only cash prize worth 50,000 rupees, but it's also a chance to win the title of national champion of Classmates Bell B season 12, and with that, an opportunity to go to Washington DC to witness the Scripps Spelling Bee live, and also a chance to visit the iconic White House. And now, let us begin the race for the ultimate Spell Nobel. Brace yourselves, it's going to be a bumpy round, and this is our very crucial round two. The rules of round two as such, I will ask each of you to spell four words, each worth a massive 10 points. So this is the time where you can really take the lead. I have to tell you that at the end of round two, we will have to eliminate a contestant based on whoever has scored the lowest. All right, let's begin round two. Let's welcome to the podium our first contestant for the day, Arutri Sen Gupta from Shri Shikshayatan in Kolkata. Hi, Arutri. Hi. How are you feeling? Uh, nervous. Nervous, but you have a very solid lead. You have 25 points. You're at the top of our leaderboard at the end of round one. Are we ready to begin round two? Yes. Your first word in round two worth 10 points is Nimius. Origin of the word? Latin. What does it mean? Considerable, great or excessive. May I have its usage in a sentence? The novel could have been a short story but the nimious description that started every chapter made it so long. N-I-M-E-O-U-S, nimious. I'm afraid it's off by just a letter. I. The accurate spelling is N-I-M-I-O-U-S. No matter, you're still in the lead and you do have three words remaining in round two. Your next word is also worth 10 points. And that word is brazier or brazier. It's a French word. It is a French word. What is the part of speech? It is a noun. Sometimes you should ask for all the clues, even if you're confident. And what is the definition? A portable heater consisting of a pan or stand for holding lighted coals. 
I think it is B R A S S I E R E. Brazo. I'm afraid that's incorrect. Which is why I wanted you to ask me for the definition because you spelt Brazil, not Brazil. So I'm afraid we cannot give you points for that. Your third word is docent. What is the origin of the word? Latin via German. And what's the definition? A member of the teaching staff immediately below professorial rank. I'd like to use my classmate connect option. Arithi would like to use her classmate connect option. So we would like to go with B O C E N T. Docent. I'll go for it. You'll go for it. You'd be right to do so. Well done. Another word still remains, but now we cannot use the classmate connect option. Your word to spell gouache. Gouache. It's a French word. It is Italian via French. What is the part of speech? A noun. And the definition? A method of painting using pigments ground in water and thickened. I'd spell it as G O U A C H E. Gouache. That is correct. Well done. <laughs> It was a very difficult word to spell, and you did very well. I'm so glad, and I'm so happy. At the end of round two out of three, you have a solid score of 45 points. Well played. It's time for us to take a short break, but before we go, here's a motivational story that will remind you never ever to give up. Easily the most successful horror writer in the world, Stephen King started writing and submitting his short stories when he was just 16 years of age. Every time he got a rejection letter, he put the letter on a nail on his wall. Eventually, he got so many rejection letters that the nail fell down. King finally got his first acceptance when he was 19 for a story called The Glass Floor. He was paid $35 for it. The rejection letters were reminders to do better instead of just giving up. While all you ponder that, we will take a short break. And we're back on Classmate Spell B Season 12, presented by Classmate, co-powered by Nickelodeon Sonic and The Times of India. This is an initiative by Radio Mirchi. We are on a hunt to find the next English spelling champion of India, and we're glad to have you give us company. Did you know that Stephen King listens to hard rock music while he writes? If any of you are struggling with writing horror, why not put on some ACDC and give it a shot? All right, back to our quest. It's now time for Ahilan to play round two. Hi, Ahilan. Hi. You did well in round one. All the best, Ahilan. Your word to spell for 10 points is shallot. Uh, meaning? A small bulb which resembles an onion. Uh, what's the origin? French. Usage in a sentence. You have to saute the spices in olive oil for a minute, then slowly add the shallot and stir for five minutes. S H E R L O T. I'm afraid that's incorrect. Classmates, can you spell shallot? S H A L L O T. That is correct, Manal. We were hoping for that spelling, which means we cannot give you 10 points for that. But no matter, 30 points still remain in round two. We move to your next word. That word is majuscule. Meaning? Large lettering in which all the letters are the same height. Origin? Latin via French. Uses in a sentence. His intention was to create beautiful majuscule, but the paragraph just looked out of place in the document. I'd like to use my classmate connect option. Ailan would like to use his classmate connect option. Classmates, you have 30 seconds to confer. Would like to go with M-A-J-U-S-C-U-L-E. I'll go with them. You'll go with them? You'll be right to do so. Well done. That means your total has gone up to 30 and two words still remain. Now your classmate connect option is no longer available to you. Your third word to spell for 10 points is nival. Uh, what's the definition? Relating to or characteristic of a region of perpetual snow. A usage in a sentence. The nival heights of the Alps are equally beautiful and forbidding to those who wish to cross. 
N A I V E L. I'm afraid that's incorrect. The accurate spelling is N I V A L. Sometimes it's just the simple spelling. One word does remain. It could take your total up to a solid 40 points. I wish you all the best, Ahlan. Your word to spell is none attack. What's the definition? An isolated peak of rock projecting above a surface of inland ice or snow. Use it in a sentence. The none attack rose magnificently above the snow, looking like folded hands welcoming us to the mountains. Origin? Greenlandic. I'd like to spell it as N U N N U T A C K. I'm afraid that's incorrect. The actual spelling is N U N A T A K. Arthi, did you know that one? Yes, yes. Sometimes it's just a luck of the draw which words you get and some you're familiar with and some you're not. I'm afraid we cannot give you points for that. At the end of round 1 and 2, Ailan, you have a solid score of 30 points. Well played. And now it's time for last but not least that's welcome Pari Sharma from Cambridge Court in Jaipur to play round 2. Hi Pari. Hi. How are you feeling? Nervous. I know round 1 was a bit tough for you and you made it through with just the rules. I wish you all the best. Your first word in round 2 is worth 10 points. That word is lancet. What is the language of Odisha? French via Middle English. Can you define it? A small broad two-edged surgical knife or blade with a sharp point. Can you use it in a sentence? Dr. Roberts was gifted a beautiful brass replica of his lancet as a token of gratitude from the hospital. L A N C E T You're correct. <laughs> I have to ask you whether you were finished because you took long pauses between every letter. Slow and steady, but you got there in the end. Well done. Ten points to your score. Thank you. Your second word in round two, again worth ten points, is plebian or plebian. Can you define it? Common place, lacking refinement or class. What is the language of origin? Latin. Can you use it in a sentence? He takes such a plebian attitude to interacting with his co-workers that he's universally hated. P L E B B I A N. I'm afraid that's incorrect. Only one B. P L E B and there's an E. I A N is the accurate spelling of plebian, which means we cannot give you points for that, but two words still remain in round 2 and your third word could take your total to 25 points. Your word to spell is dactylic. Can you define it? Having a pattern of one stressed syllable followed by two unstressed syllables. Can you use it in a sentence? The poem relies on the elocutor punching the dactylic words like merrily and happily. D A C T Y L L I C off by just one letter. The accurate spelling is D A C T Y L I C. So I think you put in an extra L there. You almost had it, but I'm sorry that means we can't give you points for that. One word does remain in round 2 and your classmate connect option is still available to you. Your word to spell is tellurian. Can you define it? Of or inhabiting the earth. Can you use it in a sentence? I read sci-fi novels simply to get away from the same tellurian problems that fill the news every day. Can you tell me the language of origin? Latin. I would like to use my classmate calling option. Classmates, if you could spell Tellurian for Pari. Tellurian. T E L L U R I A N. Tellurian. You can choose to accept that. I'll go with it. You'll go with them. You'll be right to do so. Well done. <laughs> And thanks to the classmates at the end of round 2, you have a total of 25 points. Well played, Pari. So with this our round 2 ends we'll share the final scores soon after this short break but before we leave i have a question to ask our studio audience and of course our viewers at home so the question is this which iconic english poem and poet do the following lines belong to for men may come and men may go but i go on forever studio audience you have time to think hard till we come back from this short break
Hello and welcome to Classmate Spell B Season 12, the biggest English spelling competition in India. Presented by Classmate, co-powered by Nickelodeon Sonic and the Times of India. This is an initiative by Radio Mirchi. And we are looking for our next stellar speller and you are on board for this joyride. So before the break, I'd asked our studio audience a question. Which iconic English poem and poet do the following lines belong to? For men have come and men may go, but I go on forever. And I have with me Khushi, who claims to know the right answer. So will you please share it with all of us? The Brook by Alfred Lawn Tennyson. That is correct. Well done. Well done, Khushi. And we have something very special for you, which is a big, heavy, colourful hamper, courtesy classmate. And now it's time for the scores of round two. In the first position, we have Arithri at 45 points. In second position today, we have Ahilan at 30 points. And in third position, we have Pari with 25 points. I'm sorry, Pari, you know what that means. That means just for today, it's the end of the journey for you, but certainly not in life. You have a very bright future ahead of you. Of that, I'm confident. Please have a seat in the audience and thank you so much for being on the show with us. Now, let's begin round three. Please join me at the podium. So, let's briefly go over the rules of round three. There will be four cycles of words, so a total of eight words. If you spell the word assigned to you correctly, you will be awarded 10 points. If you misspell it, it will pass to your fellow contestant who will have an opportunity to score five precious bonus points, which can really make or break the game. We could have a result even before we complete the four cycles of words. And I do have to tell you now, at this point, your scores from round one and round two are wiped clean, so you stand at 0-0 zero, zero apiece. All right? So with your eye on the prize, that trophy, 50,000 rupees, a place in the finals, a chance to go to DC, chance to visit the White House, should we begin? And let the quest for the next stellar speller begin. Arithri, we'll start with you. Your first word in round three is worth 10 points. And that word is dyad. So what is the origin of the word? Greek via Latin. Uh, may I have it in a sentence? The mother-child dyad is considered to be the most perfect example of two beings with one soul. May I have the definition? Something that consists of two elements or parts. It is D-I-A-D, dyad. I'm afraid the word passes. And Ahilan has a chance to score five bonus points. I think it is D I. A, D, E. I'm afraid that's also incorrect. Classmates, would you like to spell dyad? It's D-Y-A-D. D-Y-A-D is the spelling that we were going for, which means nobody gets points for that. And now we move to you, Ahilan. It's your turn to spell. For 10 points, your first word in round three is EGOT. May I have the definition? The achievement of winning an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Usage in a sentence. Andrew Lloyd Webber recently joined the exclusive list of those who manage the EGOT. Origin. 1980s coined term. I'd like to spell it as E-G-O-T. That is correct. Very well done. I'm so pleased to tell you that you have 10 points to your score. And it is now our second cycle of words, starting again with you, Aditri. Your word to spell for 10 points is a black creation. What is the meaning? The loosening or removal of the soil surrounding the roots of a tree or vine. Uh, may I have the language of origin, please? Latin via Middle English. Uh, is it a verb? It's a noun. So I'd spell it as A B L A Q U A T I O N, a black creation. I'm afraid the word passes. And Ahilan has a chance to score some bonus points. Could you repeat the word again? A black creation. What's the origin? Latin via Middle English. Could you use it in a sentence? I'm worried that this tree could fall easily during a storm given the decades of a black creation around its roots. A B L A Q U I A S H U N. I'm afraid that's also incorrect. The accurate spelling is A B L A Q U E A T I O N. A tough word, tough to say, so I can imagine it's also tough to spell. Which means nobody gets points for that word. And now we move to Ahilan. Your turn to spell for 10 points. Your word to spell is omphalomancy. Definition. Divination of the future by studying the navel. Origin. Middle English. Usage in a sentence. The priest used omphalomancy to convince the queen that she would have more than five children. A U M. P 
पी एच ए एल ओ एम ए एन सी वाई आई एम फेट द वर्ड पास words. Starting again with you, Arithri. Your word to spell is kerfuffle. Ah, uh, may I have its definition? A commotion or fuss, especially one caused by conflicting views. Language of origin? Scottish and Irish. So it's K E R F U F F L E. Kerfuffle. That is correct. Well done. <laughs> well done. You've evened the score, both of you now at ten points apiece. So it is anyone's game. But Ahilan, you now do have a chance. to take the lead again and score an additional 10 points if you spell this word correctly your word to spell is weasley definition deceitful or cunning origin dutch by german by middle english usage in a sentence he has survived 40 years and five political parties simply by mastering the art of being weasley w e a s e l y the word passes and it really is neck and neck now arithri you could score five bonus points taking the lead if you spell weasley correctly the origin dutch via german via middle english can you repeat the definition deceitful or cunning it is w e a s i l y weasley that is also incorrect <laughs> classmates would you like to spell weasley w e a s e l l y That is correct. W e a s e l l y is the accurate spelling of Weasley. It is now time for our fourth, final cycle of words in round three. The scores are tied at ten points apiece, so it really is very stiff competition, and the game is anyone's. I wish you both all the best. Out of three, we start with you. Your word for ten points is bouillon. It's yes. a French word. It is a French word. And what is the definition? Thin soup or stock. Made by stewing meat, fish, or vegetables in water. Okay, I think it is B O U I L L O N. Bouillon. That is correct. Well done. <laughs> well done. Elan, I'm afraid the pressure is on you now. Your word to spell for ten points is more so. Definition. Short literary or musical compositions. Origin. French. Art of speech. A noun. Usage in a sentence. Parties would typically end with Pierre playing a dozen morceaux to delight the crowds. M O R S O T. I'm so sorry. That's incorrect. Arithi, would you like to try to spell morceau? Uh, I think it is M A U S E A U morceau. That is also incorrect. Let me just tell you what the accurate spelling of morceau is. M O R C E A U X is the accurate spelling, which brings us to the end of our four cycles of words, and that means that we do have a result today. And I'm so pleased to tell you that Arithri, you have won the semi-final, and we're so excited for you. Very well played. You both played very well. Unfortunately, there can only be one. finalist today and that is arithi today let's give her a big round of applause ahilan if i could ask you to take a seat in the audience and thank you so much for staying with us arithi please join me on stage congratulations again well done to hand over our trophy and the prizes may i please have mr vishnu amancharla marketing manager itc education and stationery products business on stage with us Arithri has won the prestigious Classmates Spellbee Trophy today, but a new day and a new set of spelling warriors await when we'll be back next weekend. Before you leave, I'd like to recommend a book to all of you: To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, a novel way ahead of its time. This Pulitzer Prize winner is praised for its sensitive treatment of a child's first encounter with racism and prejudice. Told through the eyes of lovable little terrors, Scout and Jem, based in the deep American South, it's also created one of literature's most beloved heroes. 
Atticus Finch, a man determined to right the racial wrongs in the Deep South. This is Sohali Khan signing off from the biggest English spelling competition of India, Classmate Spell Bee Season 12, presented by Classmate, co-powered by Nickelodeon, Sonic and the Times of India. This is an initiative by Radio Mirchi. Until next time, Arrivederci people! <laughs>